joined by regular co-host Andy. Good evening, Andy. Hey, up, mate. Hopefully, my Hopefully. Wi-Fi's a bit better this week. Yeah, it's looking better at the minute. So, fingers crossed that clearing your router might have worked. So, we're going to jump straight into it tonight. A little bit of a lighter edition tonight, but hopefully we'll get plenty of um, comments in the sidebar. Mm. So, we're going to start off, Andy, with a show that we went to on Saturday night with Scott Callow and Boxing Connected. So, we're going to cover two of the main fights. So, we're going to start with Stanley Stanard. So, I'll let you take it away, Andy, on your thoughts on Stan's performance. Uh, I, I thought Stan was great. He um, he started off a little bit slow. He said it himself. Uh, anyone that's um, anyone that follows the show might have seen the the post fight video we did with him. Um, very honest Stan. Very he's a very honest fighter. Uh, trained by Carl Greaves. They've got a really good connection. Those two. Um, it, me and you have been at a few of their shows now, haven't we? Um, yeah. And we Stan improves fight on fight on fight. Um, and he got. He got his just deserves uh, with a great little stoppage. Um, like I say, he started off a bit slow, and grew into the fight. He could have stopped. Uh, he could have stopped his, his opponent in in the third round with some really good body shots, looking like he was going to. But he took his time. He didn't rush, um, and he was working on a lot of the stuff. We, we were um, as people that, that that were there might 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 be able to say we were backstage uh, doing some interviews and. Luckily for us, we were in the next dressing room to to Carl and, and Stan, so we saw a bit of the bit of the back backstage pad work and stuff he was doing, and, and a lot of the shots he was working on on the pads, he pulled off in the ring. Um, great little performance. He's a he's the man to watch out for, in my opinion. He has a really good following. He's got a great coach, uh, and he's got a really good head on his shoulders. Stan, nothing phases him. He don't get big headed or too big for his boots. Um, cracking fighter. Remember that name. Everyone that's watching this, remember the name Stanley Stanard. Over to you, Carl. Yeah, you've done your promoters bit. Yeah, I like Stan. Yeah, I like Stan. Um, he's getting better the more we watch him. Yeah, yeah. It's quite interesting. His next fight in Leicester, bit of a plug for Carl here, 24th of September, Morningside Arena. If you haven't got your tickets, get onto Carl's website. Um, he's going over 10 rounds, Andy, for the first time in his career. So, well, he's, that's good to see. He's, aim, he's aiming for that Midlands title, isn't he? Um, that's his goal. He's, you know, he's um, one of his stable mates has got it at the minute. So, uh, you know, that kind of needs to be ironed out about where he goes, whether he goes at that weight, whether he goes at the weight above. But that's his target for the end of the year, is a Midlands title. Um, whether whether that's a little bit too soon for him, we'll see, won't we? But like you say, he's stepping up to ten rounds, um, and and obviously the titles title fights are at ten rounds, so that's the aim. I don't believe it is too early, but obviously things are not working. He's got a few barriers in front of him, hasn't he? But well, it's just unfor it's unfortunate, isn't it, that Carl had a had to pull a show because of an injury to yeah. one of his fighters. Um, so um, you know, and 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 he's had to what he's had to do is scramble around and get. Um, and get his fighters on all the shows, which, which which gives a lot of props to the small old scene, because they all work well with each other. You know, you don't get backstabbing like you're doing in the in the larger shows, um, and no one wanting wanting to work with each other. They're all there for each other. They they all know how hard it is to get the fighters out, um, and it has been for the last few years, obviously with the COVID situation. So. Um, obviously, Carl Carl's gone to Scott Callow and said, "You know, can you get Stan on this on this show for me?" And 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 Scott's obliged, just like Carl would do the opposite way around. But Stan's twenty five. So obviously, he was in with Craig some of this time out. It, it was levels above him, if you're honest. Yeah. So he's got a bit of time. He's Sapo. You know, you know how I like Sapo. So yeah, I think Stan he's got it all. I, I, I just want to see him jump up the levels now. Obviously, Carl Greed, you can't have anyone better to guide your career. Carl will do it steady, take him to the level steady. Yeah. Um, but obviously, with Carl's connection, it goes without saying that he's very well positioned to start getting on some bigger shows, which can only be good. Carl's had stand since he turned pro. So they've got a very good relationship. Carl knows him inside out. And he will do the right thing for Stanard. Absolutely certain of that. It's very clear when you see him and the internet that they've got a very close relationship. Yeah, yeah. You know? And you can't be any better hands than Carl Greaves, in my view. So, yeah. Exciting times ahead for Stanard. 
And then moving on to the next fight, so that was um, Ben Norman versus Liam Dring, and obviously there's, there's oh, a bit of ag- right. there's a bit of aggro here, wasn't there, in the way in which me and you were in Liverpool at the time, uh, which only added to it, didn't it? So yeah, I, I, a bit of a shame that we didn't see that. I mean, there's history as well. Um, ben, the Norman, ben Norman beat Dring in the, in the amateurs, so there was a bit of needle there anyway. What a fight this was, mate! How, how great yeah. was this fight? This is what this fight is what small old shows are all about. 50 50, going for a title. Brilliant crowd, by the way. Um, there's always there's always a fantastic crowd turnout for these fighters. Uh, uh, we just talked about Stanley Standard has a really good following. So do these two. Um, brilliant, brilliant crowd. Split down the middle. The atmosphere was fantastic. Yeah, what a great fight, mate. What a great fight. It's a shame that one of them had to lose, to be honest. And also for the Midland area flyweight title, so it, that adds to the spice as well. Yeah, yeah. I enjoyed this fight. I, I'll be honest with you, it's one of the best fights I've seen live this year. You know, neither one of them was taking a back foot. And it was an absolute war, wasn't it? It was just a war from first belt to last belt. You know, real, 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 real good advert, like you said, for small all boxing and yeah, what can we achieve. So overall, a good card by Scott Callow. Really appreciate the invite, Scott, um, and a good quality show. I think that's a good Absolutely. way. I mean, absolutely. Up. Just, just one last thing on that. There was lots of other fighters on the show. Lots of other fighters on the card. Lots of other good fights on the card. We just haven't got the time to go through them all. But um, a lot of prospects. A lot of real good. A lot prospects. of prospects. Uh, and and look on look on our um, on our interviews that we've got up on up on our show um, up on Last Bell Boxing. There's some great interviews with the fighters that were on that card. Um, so it'll give you a bit of an idea of what they're about, who they are, um, because they're coming. They're coming for the big the big shows at some point or another, I've no doubt. So moving on to the other end of the scale. So on Friday night, we attended Liverpool, m and Arena. We went to the Channel 5 show, which I don't know about you, Andy, but I really enjoyed going behind the scenes. I think we learned a lot on that night. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Thank shout out to Cadge the Hall. We arranged the tickets and kindly got us into the press area. We're rubbing shoulders with the likes of Boxing Social and um, IFL. Um, one particular interview that we won't talk about, Andy, but the rest of them is, uh, you know, is a real good interview. Once a good press conference. Yes. Yeah. yeah we'll be honest, was... we had, we had, to be fair, 1.3 million views is the reported number that we're being told Channel Five did on the night. It'll be fair to say we probably expected a few more it, coming through the, the turnstiles would be a fair comment. Um, but overall, Andy, like I say, let's start with Josh Kelly. What do, what do you think of Josh Kelly? Well, um, this is the first time Josh Kelly's been out since David Avenesian. So he had, um, he had, a, he had a, a bit of a, a situation down in London for the first Channel 5 show with Wasm and where his opponent pulled out at the last minute and, and he just couldn't fight. And, and it must be a bit sickening as a fighter being in that position. You, you, you know, you're ready to go. And the guy didn't pull out till the morning of the fight. He went through the way in. Anyway, that's all history. Um, so he was he was rearing to go. He blew a load of cobwebs away. Did we learn anything different from him? I'm not quite sure. Uh, you'll see that when he goes up the levels a little bit, I think. I, my personal opinion is he was classes above the fighter he was in with, and he probably could have stopped him whenever he wanted. Um, but I think he wanted a few rounds. The only thing I'll give props for Josh Kelly for is holding that weight for them four, four or five yeah. weeks. A lot of people talk about his weight, don't they? And how he struggles at the weight, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but he was disciplined enough to maintain weight all the way through to this Liverpool card. I think. I think it's um, it's an absolute guarantee now that. That the fight on uh, on Friday night was a super welter. Yeah, so it's an absolute absolute guarantee for me that super welter is where Josh Kelly should be at. Uh, I think I think he was just too big for welterweight. Um, he looked he looked really healthy. He looked really happy and really strong. Um, and a lot of people don't really get to see Josh Kelly's personal side and his in his his persona and. We saw a little bit of that in the post-fight press conference. And he yeah. came across like a, a really nice fella. So uh, I, I wish him all the best. I, you know, I hope he pushes on. Um, 
Yeah. I mean, we didn't learn nothing new. He had it all his own way, didn't we? If we're being honest, so it'd be interesting to see who the matching with yeah. next. I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna jump on him for that though, Cole, because he's been out of the ring for quite some time now, um, and he needed to blow the cobwebs away. He needed to feel, feel the the, the lights of the big night again, and and he's done that now. So I can imagine they'll push him on quite quickly. And then moving on to Nathan Gorman, obviously Tyson Fury decided to make a bit of an entrance just before the first bell, which revved up the crowd a little bit. Um, what were your thoughts on Nathan Gorman? Again, another fighter that's been out for, for a little while. Um, Nathan Gorman has, has flew a, a lot under the radar for me. In the he had that um, very public loss, didn't he? On, on that big show against Daniel Dubois. A lot of people are forgetting how young Nathan Gorman was when he took that fight on. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that, that don't don't give him the credit. They say, you know, he's not disciplined. What I will say is, what a nice fella Nathan yeah. Gorman is. How humble is he? Um, you learn a lot what about interesting it. And, and, and kind of open... One one thing I would say about Nathan Gorman is obviously I, I know I know he won the IBF International Heavyweight title and we always go in on these belts. However, it does give him a top fifteen ranking. And when I was looking at the IBF rankings, I can see why Callis Island's took him down this route because you've got Ergovic sat at three. We know Callis Island's got links with Ergovic. You've got Cabal, Cabal set at seven. Again, German fire two Salon's got links with. So it's quite interesting that Gorman could be climbing their rankings quite quickly because they're two, two will have, well, Ergovic is a tough fight, but, you know, it's interesting. He could find himself in a very strong position after another couple of fights if he, if he can stay motivated. I rate Gorman. I think if he can stay motivated, he can do some damage in that heavyweight division. So, like you said, nice fella, very humble guy, gave us a bit of time for an interview, which is always kind. I just think he just needs to stay active now, doesn't he? He just needs to stay active. That's yeah. the key. Yeah, but yeah, very interesting, mate. Um, it, it'd, be, it'd be good to see where they take him next. But like you say, they are, they're obviously looking down that ranking route. Uh, and that's not a bad, that's not a bad thing. Do you want to so, pick up the, the comment in the sidebar? Yeah, so Joe says the Channel 5 show was one of the worst I've ever watched on TV. And they got rid of Mick, who was putting on some cracking fights, but I'm sure Callum enjoyed. So, I mean, let's have it right, though, Joe. And she put on some damn squids, though, didn't she? You know, I think you might be looking through rose tinted glasses a little bit there on Anissa. Some of his shows were, were, were tragic. Yeah. I just think it's early days for Channel 5. It wasn't, you know, the two, I said to Andy, I won't, won't mind admitting them two main events went too early. I said that to Andy, didn't you, in, in, this, in the state, in the arena? Yeah, it's one of them. The, the Channel 5 are, are a little bit, a little bit stuck because there's only so much of a time slot Channel 5 will give to the boxing at the minute. Um, so it's a bit of a juggling act as to, to know when to go live and when to, to start the main events. Um, I mean, they ended up putting a couple of fillers in afterwards to fill the time up. It's that can't be helped. You've got no way of knowing how fights are going to go. Um, I think it's a bit, it's a bit it's early. For, it's a bit it's early to early say that, that, that they're not doing not. a very good job. Per, I mean, personally, Wasserman and, and, um, the Salem brothers, they're only building, they're only starting to build the bank of fighters. There's no doubt more are going to come along at some point. I mean, what I would say, you've got to remember it's on terrestrial TV with a limited budget. But obviously we're well connected with Channel 5 and they have assured that they expect more competitive fights moving forward. So I wouldn't be too critical yet, Joe. I think we just got to give them a bit of time. Um, let's celebrate I the fact that there's fights on terrestrial TV to start. Yeah, it I might mean, not be the only thing that we expect, but you know, let's let's give them a bit of time to work the magic. I think we need to look. I think we need to look look at this and take it in, into a little bit of perspective. When 
Sky um, are taking subscribers in the way they do and the amount of money they, they pay. There's a big budget there. Same with DAZN. So they can get massive names and and very stacked cards because they've got the funding to do it. So it's a building process with Channel 5. And I think what's going to happen, what will end up happening, Carl, is they'll give them more than a couple of hour time slot. They'll give them a bit more of a time slot. When they start seeing the, the viewers rise, I mean, I mean, from what I understand, the first show that they had in London did 1 million. And then the one up in Liverpool on Friday did three, uh, 1.3 million. When was the last time a standard Saturday night boxer show did 1.3 million viewers? Or a, or a or a disowned show on a Saturday night. When did that last do 1.3 million viewers? And also, let's have it right. Some of the fights that we see on Boxer Channel Five, disown Sky, whatever you want platform you want to talk about, a lot of them are one-sided and and often over in a couple of rounds as well. Yeah. I'm not sure you can just level it at Channel Five. I'm I, I'm happy to see see where it goes. I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna judge them too much. I'm, I'm happy to see where it goes with Channel 5. I think they're trying. It's about time we had boxing back on on free-to-air free TV. Fully agree. So I'm, I'm, I'm backing them all, all the way. Wow, they've got it. Let's watch this space. Yeah, yeah. So moving on. So obviously Saturday night, big fight. Better be here versus Smith Jr. Joe Smith Jr. Oh. Hold on, before we go on to that, we're not going to talk about what else happened on Friday. What's that? What did we do Friday Friday first thing before we went to the boxing? The Rotunda. Yeah, I was yeah. going to mention that at the end, Ander, when we finished reviewing all the boxing. Oh, sorry, no, sorry. Carry on, mate. Yeah. Will you not get involved in the in the production side of it? Just leave that to me. <laughs> so, like I originally said, before Andy rudely interrupted, better be here versus Joe Smith Jr. And do I'll take it away? For, didn't last long, did it? Um, Joe Smith Jr. fought the wrong fight, mate, didn't he? I mean, I know, was, I know it was home turf and he was obviously getting wound up and he was obviously excited by the crowd and all of that. Has he took one too many shots in his previous fights? It's almost as bad as, it's almost as, bad as AJ trying to outbox Usyk in that first yeah, fight. exactly. Who stands toe-to-toe -to -toe in front of Biev? Better be who, who does that? Who does that and comes out out, out the other end? Nobody. I, I don't know. I don't know what Joe Smith was thinking. I don't know what his coaching staff are thinking. It was only going one way. As soon as he it, as soon as he stood there and started trading, it was only going one way. I'll tell you what though. These better be a be a fanboys. There's a few things that I noticed on 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 Saturday night. Yes, if he hits you that right hand, you're going to sleep. However. He overreaches with the right hand. He goes square on after throwing the right hand. And he's slow as with his footwork. So they're talking about Anthony Yard next. I think he beats Yard. But then they're talking about Bivol early 2023. I'm telling you, and people tweet me and whatever, remind me of this. Bivol will outpoint better be F. Yeah, that points him. He won't, he won't just outpoint him, Carl. He'll score better be ever because but he won't he won't not better be ever. That's what I'm saying. It'll go no, 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 but no, it'll score him though. It, it'll win every, every minute of every round because better be ever's too slow. And he's slowing up the older he's getting. Yes, he's an animal. Yes, he'll stand there and he'll trade and he'll swing all night long if you're gonna stand in front of him. But Bivol's not gonna stand in front of him. Bivol's gonna box and move. He will come inside, but it but he'll do it smart, just like he did against Canelo. And if he feels like he's not getting anything back, then maybe he'll trade a bit more. But he don't need to because he's Canelo wasn't, quick enough, Canelo wasn't quick enough to lay a glove, so better be has got absolute no chance. And these this nonsense I'm hearing on other channels and people that are tweeting me telling me that better be will not be for that. All I can say is have a day off. Well, it's one of them, mate, isn't it? If if Better Be Ev connects, then it might be a different fight. If that happens, you don't, don't know, does that? Well, he's got less chance, I think, than uh, than 
Bivolas have scored him on points? I don't think he gets near Bivol. Bivol's all wrong. I mean, I'll stick my neck out today. I think Callum Smith's beats better be ever all day long. Yeah, you'll get slated for that one as well because people are sleeping on Callum Smith a lot as well. I know they are. I know they are. Everyone, the, the Canelo result, um, and they think that Callum Smith was, was overhyped. He was drained. When he, he was, I, no, I don't think he was drained. What I think is he took too much out of him in camp because it was a, he only got a short period, didn't he? He didn't get a long camp. He got, he got very short notice. He took too much out of him to get down to the weight. I don't think he was drained, but I don't think he had a lot left. And not only that, but he blew his bicep out very early on in the fight. And then he couldn't use that hand. Who beats Canelo with one arm? No one. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see who Smith jumps in, Callum Smith jumps in with next. Obviously, we've, we've been doing a few whispers about where he's fighting next. So obviously, we won't disclose Andy, but it'll be quite interesting. Yeah. Quite interesting. That was during the visit to the Rotunda, by the way, which we'll talk about in a bit. So, Just as long as you haven't forgot. I don't think I'll forget that one. So moving on to the top topic of the night. Where it decides to load. AJ to Saudi next to fight Usyk. Now this way Andy's going to have a whinge about it being in Saudi Arabia and get his rose tinted glasses on about it must be in Britain. So I'll leave it with you, Andy. Not that I want to be a parrot, but it must be in Britain. Um, I don't know, mate. I I understand they're going there because they're getting twice as much money or whatever they're getting. I knew you was going to have a win, so I've got the quote from Eddie Earn for you. Here we go. Just, this like is that's going to matter. Go on, carry this, on. This is just for you, Andrew. So, Earn says, this isn't golf. He has a responsibility to ensure that they're as financially stable as possible. Oh, because they're both paupers, aren't they? put underneath... Fuck you and uh, get your rose tinted uh, glasses on. They're both paupers, aren't they? Yeah, a AJ Newsick. This is like this is bread, like putting bread and butter on the table for, for the families into this fight. Come on, come on. This he says it's this isn't golf. It's exactly the same. They're going for one reason. They're not going because there's better better boxing fans over there. They're not going to try and break into a new market. They go in because. There's a boatload of money, a shed load of money on the table. I don't blame him. I don't blame him one bit. Well, the price also, price, they? In this yeah, second, the in this price second, price. but in this second fight, Usyk had as much say as AJ anyway. So even if AJ did want to go back to Tottenham, Usyk's camp could say, no, 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 we're going wherever the most money is. Usyk's woven his rights to want to fight wherever he wants around the world. He's the champion. Um, and fair enough, fair enough, mate. The prize fighters, they, they, they're going to try and make as much money as possible. I agree with Eddie Earn to that extent. But it's not, a, it's, not a boxing, it's not a boxing country, mate. And there's a lot of fans missing out. Because well, I, think he's, I think he's poor as a spectacle. Because what's his purpose-built stadium, which is going to hold what? Not many, is it? The atmosphere is atrocious. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one thing was the atmosphere at Tottenham was electric, wasn't it? And the atmosphere for the Fury always, fly at Wembley was as electric. Always, as always. Because UK fighters know what they're talking about. Even if it went to America, mate, there'd be better atmosphere. I just, um, it, it just, I don't know. It just gripes on me a little bit, mate. This is going to happen more and more and more often. Especially when, you, you know, when... His owner trying to claw back a certain amount of money for a for a massive contract for for a certain fighter, um, and and we got to pay pay per view, which is the the major thing that's pissing me off about this fight. The major thing that's pissing me off about um, his own signing AJ. This basically. They wanted to bring pay per view. Does anyone wanted to bring pay per view into the UK for quite some time now? Is it Eddie cash? Tried, Eddie Earn tried to 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 put it on as dinner, 
a while back, six months ago. <clears throat> and what did the boxing public do? They got up, up, up there was uproar about it because not that long back, Eddie Owen was saying pay per view's dead. That was his uh, that was his promotional quote when when he signed with um, pay per view's dead. You're going to get the not the only sport doing the it post. all. They're all, they're all at it, aren't they? They're all at you, it. Yeah, I know they are, but but don't say it one one minute and then and then make pay, people pay extra money. Although when they're already paying a subscription, and it might only be seven ninety nine, mate. It doesn't matter. Could be could be twenty ninety nine, and you still make it. Still make the AJ fight. He must, he must have the same PR bloke as you've got. It's frustrating. I'm sorry. It's frustrating. So in the sidebar, Joe says, if you go to Saudi, you have to take the flat that comes your way. Completely I don't agree, think the all that. Completely agree, mate. I don't so think this, the um, this, uh, this, this pay-per-view model is, 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 is really getting on my wick, mate, because they start off by saying pay-per-view's dead. You're going to get all the best fighters for one ninety nine, and then $7.99. Um, now they're saying because they're paying Anthony Joshua whatever millions it's hand over a, a, a multi fight contract or whatever it is that he's getting. Um, what about if he gets beat? Under? They've got to claw that back. Hey, eh? what about if he gets what about if he gets beat? That deal's expensive if he gets beat, isn't it? Well, it's a gamble, but the thing is, at the end of the day, they're still going to put AJ in, in pay-per-view fights, whether he gets beat or not. It makes no odds to them. AJ still not, get, in, and, and they'll take not, every, every single AJ fight to Saturday. So, it ain't so going to do the same. To in terms of pay-per-view buyers, though, it ain't going to do the same, is it, when they start throwing him in with Chizora and all that lot, that it would if he was fighting the, 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 the U6 and Furious. It isn't going to do the same, mate, but... I think Eddie it's a gamble. I do. Eddie, 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 Eddie's not bothered me. He don't care. AJ, think the problem is AJ's the sort of a name that if he was fighting Joe Bloggs from from the pub down the road, he'd still make a load of money and he'd still he'd still sell a load of tickets and and a load of pay per view buys. That's the level of name he is. I just what annoys me is it's starting off with AJ. Oh yeah, well it's only going to be. Conor next. Two pay-per-views a year, yeah. So Conor Ben, Ben next. Definitely. Then who's it going to be after that? The next big name coming along. So before you know it, you'll be paying for six, eight, ten pay-per-views a year on top of what you're already paying. Yeah. It just, it, it's, it's the boxing fan that has to take it every single time, mate. It's not on. So Joe said, I'm expecting it to be around $29.99. I won't be paying for it. And I suspect loads more won't eat either. Joe, I've got to admit, if it's around the 30 quid mark, you know, that's, you know, it's expensive, isn't it? I mean, I, I, know, wonder... that he, I know that he was already on pay-per-view on, on Sky. Um, so people will say, well, you, you would have paid for, for the pay-per-view on Sky. It's, it's the fact that DAZN have gone back on the word that annoys me more than anything else. Yeah, when Ern put that out about, you know, like I said, the pay-per-view is dead, and he made a, made a big marketing ploy out of it, didn't he, as well, which yeah, makes yeah. it even worse. Yeah, he did. And, and and boxing fans got excited. Oh, fantastic. We're going to see massive fights, and we're only going to be paid seven ninety nine a month. Brilliant. That's amazing. Roll on six months, eight months, whatever it is, a year, however long it is since they did that deal. Um, and and it's all it's all U turn now, and and you're going to be paying, as Joe's just said, the best part of thirty pound uh, to see a fight with no atmosphere. Yeah, and there's talk that Joe Joyce is going to fight Tyson Fury as a takeover fight, isn't there? You know, that's also been mentioned as well. So will, will that be pay per view on top rank or something? What's that one? Say that again. So the rumour has it that I've been reading that Joe Joyce may be fighting Tyson Fury as a takeover fight. Oh, no. um, and I know that Lewis Ortiz has also announced his next fight, hasn't he? Who's that against? Um, let me just check. It's one that let's start, yeah. 
Can we let's have some opinions in the sidebar? Yeah. How old do you think, how old do you think Luis Ortiz is now? I'm going for 65. So Luis Ortiz is going to fight Andy Andy Ruiz Jr. Oh, really? So that's where we are at the minute. Um, maybe that's on the zone pay per view. I don't know. How many times are these fighters going to get rolled out? Gary's put 62. <laughs> He's knocking on, mate, isn't he? Gary also said, I can't see George versus Fiore. I've seen Shalom offered them 1.2 million, offered 1.2 million to Warren for George Parker. Yeah, Warren's uh, Warren's sniped back at that though, aren't he? I think he's having a pop at, at um, Josie Parker because that fight was virtually made. One thing I want to do is where does Dubois go next? Where do you Dubois, think he goes next? Uh, Dubois not got to go looking for anybody, mate. He's in a prime position now. The, the problem for Dubois, in my opinion, is he's now the target. Because even if people don't want his version of the title, they want his ranking. So whether people agree that, that the WBA should have two titles or not is beside the point. It's all about Dubois' ranking. And he's going to find himself in a, in a world of trouble if, if they're not careful who they match him with. So Gary says Dubois... Gary said Dubois versus a decent opponent. I will be happy to let him take his time. He's talking he's about a, activity. So, it, you know, I can't imagine him be sat around. I think he'll be active. He's, he, he'll, have, he'll have mandatories though, won't he? Um, so I'm not I'm not too sure who, who's, who's next in line for him. Having said that, um, didn't his opponent... Uh, didn't his opponent have that belt for about five years and didn't really fight? Yeah, yeah. Trevor Bryan. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he had it. I'm, I'm sure he was champion for about five years and no one knew. Dubois needs more learning fights. Small step up, in my opinion. Gary, this will never happen. Never, ever. Dubois versus Bakola. It'd be a great fight because they can both bang. Uh, I don't think... I don't think that... Warren or the McGuigans all let Dubois anywhere near the cola. No. He's st th th the thing is, he's still a kid. He needs he's still learning. He's still learning his trade. He just he, he they got him they got him into a position where he could fight for a world title. Um and you're not gonna turn that down, are you? But the problem is now he's in that position and he's high up in the rankings, he's he's gonna he's gonna be in a position where he can't drop back down the levels now. He's got to carry on fighting people up there. And then... So Gary's put, is he the boogeyman, would you say? Are we talking about Bacoli? Uh, if you're talking about Bacoli, yeah. then... Yeah, I think he is in, in the sense that he's been in with all the real top names in sparring and apparently he's given them all a nightmare. Yeah. Um, so... I don't think any of them want to risk themselves against Piccoli. He's going to find uh, he's going to find himself really difficult to match, especially after the Yoka win. So just try this one out then with the lads on the side. We're off off to a Lee, an audience with Lee Wood tomorrow night doing a bit of filming. Do you think Lee Wood beats Warrington? Do you think Lee Wood beats Santa Cruz if Santa Cruz ever boils back down to that weight? Because I know we do, Ander. Yep. So it'd be interesting to get your comments on the side. So from what we understand, uh, there's negotiations going on for Lee Wood's next fight. Um, and there's a bit of a stalling point on, on one or two things. That's not come from anyone in particular. That's common knowledge um, across even Twitter. Um, I think it's just a case of him, of him just waiting now to see how it all pans out. Uh, the way the WBA are going, they look like they're trying to amalgamate the two belts. And there's a lot, of, a lot of the divisions now only as a super champion. They're going around the answers about doing it, though, aren't they? they? Well, that's because they don't want... 
quite clearly, mate, qu- quite clearly, the WBA, for whatever reason, don't want to lose Santa Cruz as the super champion. They've let him keep the belt for th- well over three years, as, as I've made public knowledge on this show on more than one occasion. Um, he's had that belt for three years and not defended it. So they're in no rush to, to, to get him to do anything. And the but the but the longer they wait, the harder it's going to be for him to. This way, Ern should be applying the pressure. I don't know what it is about Eddie Ern because obviously Dylan White had to wait. Jesus, how long? Yep. Eddie Ern should be clearing this matter up about this split, you know, and getting this fight made because we were talking about a city ground at one time. Well, that's come and gone, hasn't it? Because if, to get it put on now, the football season will be on. So he's pointing towards him going to America. That if I had to put my last pound, which I'm close to, on a bet, I would say Lee was going to end up going to America and fighting Santa Cruz. You heard it here first. So Gary's put, uh, I believe Lee Wood can beat them all. Um, Joe's put, Santa Cruz not coming back down. Um, and he beats Warrington. He's too easy to hit. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm assuming you mean Lee Wood beats Warrington. Yeah. Um, Gary's put he showed his last three fights he can box and can bang uh, and he's got a good chin coming from through uh, the column fight yeah there's more than one way to become world level isn't there um, a lot of people have got this this fascination with slick back foot fighters and that's lovely to watch don't get me wrong but that's not the only that's not the only attribute you need to be a world a world level fighter you need to have chin you need to have heart you need to have grit you need to have determination you need to have never you need to have a never giving attitude and lee wood's got all of that and he can box by the way uh, which he just doesn't get the credit for uh, joe's put no chance the santa cruz fight happens pbc won't do business with hearn but the problem is, though, Joe, it was sanctioned by the WBA, so they've got to fight. They either agree, they either agree to the bids, or it, or, or it goes to purse bids. If it goes to purse bids, Eddie Earn might drag him over here if he puts in enough money. It's either that, it's either that, Joe, or he gets stripped. And, and if that happens, then Lee Wood should be made up to champion. I mean, in my opinion, the Lee Wood. Michael Conlon fight should have been for the Super Championship. Um, but it, like I say, the WBA, for whatever reason, they absolutely love Santa Cruz. Uh, Matt Nash, uh, Wood needs a big, big fight now. Um, has to capitalise on the Conlon win. Well, Matt, um, I believe you're going to the evening with Lee Wood tomorrow night, mate. So you can ask that's him that a big, That's a big word for Matt, isn't it? Capitalise. Well done, Matt. <laughs> Matt, um... So- Someone's had the Oxford Dictionary, yeah. Seeing as though Cole's trying to put it on you, mate, I think he owes you a beer tomorrow night. I'll make sure he gets you one. Um, but yeah, I mean, th- that's a great question to be asking Lee Wood. So uh, I, hope, I hope you're going to put that on him, mate. Matt won't ask him that. You're joking, are you? And the last thing I wanted to touch on was Josh, Josh Taylor. So Josh Taylor's come out the last couple of days and said he's going to stay at 140 and, and give Jack Cattrall the rematch. Do you think it happens, Andy, or do you think it's a load of ball? Um, I think I, I think Josh Taylor's been forced into taking the fight, if I'm being completely honest. The annoying thing for me, though, is it's happened too late because now it's not for undisputed. So Jack Cattrall, if he comes away with a win, he's not going to be undisputed champion. It's not fair. That's it's right. There's a lot going on on Twitter. I'm a, I'm a Josh Taylor fan, uh, and even after even after the result, you can't blame Josh Taylor for no. for the way the the judges saw the fight. No. What 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 does stick in me throat a little bit is the fact that uh, for quite some time after the fight, he wasn't having none of it. He was saying he was moving up. He was saying he couldn't make the weight no more. All of a sudden, now he can make the weight again. So I don't know. Um, I hope to see the fight again because it was a good fight. Uh, I think Taylor has a little bit to prove if he does. If he does take the fight, 
Gary, yes, I watched the documentary this afternoon. It, it's a good watch for anyone who's not watched Josh Taylor's documentary. He knew he lost that fight. Gary didn't take. You could tell his body language in the documentary after the fight. I think he's got to give him the rematch because his legacy is going to be tainted by this fight if he doesn't do so, if he doesn't write that wrong in his eyes. So I think, you know, he's going to have to jump in. The more I watch that fight, the more you can see that Warren, it wasn't even close in my eyes. Catrol beat him. So. So, so Taylor's put, uh, Taylor's put, Joe's put, Taylor probably on the no-fly list to America has no options. Do you want to, um, do you want to, do you want to give that a little bit more of a wide uh, description, mate? I don't quite know what you mean there. He must be, he must be talking about a connection with NTK Global, I would imagine. Well, no other fighters seem to have the problem. It's only, it only seems to be trainers and and promoters that 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 seem to be getting the grief. Um, I don't, I don't see, how, I don't see how that that affects the fighters, mate. Uh, boxing chit chat, one of the biggest robberies I've ever seen. Absolutely agree, mate. Um, again, though, that's nothing against Josh Taylor. He, you know, he, he's at the end of the day, he's a fighter. He was in there doing his doing his business. It's down to the the referees and the judges to make the right decision, and they didn't. They let Jack Cattrall down. Uh, Gary's put, yeah, even the sparring leading up to the fight thought was terrible uh, going into yeah. it. If you've not watched the documentary, it probably won't make sense to you, yeah, but um, give it a watch. So, Joe's Joe said... NT, NTK well, Connections, Fury Band. What, Fury, Fury's... Are we on about Tyson Fury? That's what's being rumoured. What, these banned from going to America? That's what's being rumoured, yeah. Okay, I don't know about that. Uh, that's As far as I'm aware, that's not public knowledge. So um, that's just an opinion from Joe in the sidebar. It's not an opinion of Laz Bell boxing. I don't know. And until that's made complete public knowledge, mate, um, yeah, I, I'm not going to comment on that one. And King Jim Burgers on says Fury was banned from USA for that reason, and Davison was banned from Australia for the same reason. Again, again, I, I, yeah, it's one of them, isn't it? Yeah. Is there any other topics you want to cover, Andem? Any, anyone in the sidebar want to speak about any particular comments, or there's a few more in the sidebar now? Do you want to give us your AJ prediction for Usyk too? I see the uh, fight going. Just, just gives a little bit of a breakdown on 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 the Rotunda visit, mate. Yep. So there'll be some footage dropping whilst we wait for comments in the sidebar next week. Um, myself and Andy went up to the world famous Rotunda gym on Friday. We was uh, invited by Paul Smith Junior. Um, got some great footage. Met Molly McCann and a few others. So just keep an eye out for that footage. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, give us a, give us a subscription on YouTube, hit the like, comment, and hit the notification bell. And I'll pick up a few comments. So, King Jimbo wants to talk about Canelo versus Triple G3. Um, quite a big topic, that one. So, if you want to join us on camera, we'll, we'll break it down with you. Yeah, jump on, jump on, Jimbo. Um, Matt Nash says the biggest Robert. crime was the lack of action after the first fight. Downgrading of one of one judge was not enough. Carl, put the link back in the sidebar so, so Jimbo can jump on if he wants to. And that goes for anyone else in the sidebar if fancy jumping on for five minutes. Cedric, evening, mate. Uh, he's, uh, Cedric's put Usyk wins unanimous again. Uh, I'm with you, Cedric. Um, Gary Gary says Usyk will adjust to anything Joshua brings and either and either win or get a stoppage. I think AJ's got a window. I think he's got a window of four rounds where that's his only opportunity to absolutely jump on Usyk and put it on him. I'm still not sure that's good enough, but that's his only chance he's got. He's got a window of four of of, of four rounds for me. You've uh, changed your tune a little bit, haven't you? Well, I don't think he's ever had gas in the tank, has it? I still, I still think it, no. I'm not changing my tune. I still think he'll knock him out. I just think a window, a four round window to do it. 
I completely agree that um, if he hasn't got him out there within within four like four or five rounds, he's in a world of trouble. In fact, I'll go as far as to say that if AJ fights the way we expect him to, i.e. a very aggressive <clears throat> come forward fight, if he is if he hasn't took Usyk out within them four rounds. Usyk stops him because AJ will be done. So Joe says Usyk will need to stop Joshua to get the verdict. I honestly believe Usyk get, gets robbed on the cards, I'm imagining. Cedric says, Eddie Earn said Canelo triple, triple G is a bigger fight than Spence Crawford. I disagree. Wow. Wow. Seriously. Eddie Earn. Oh, man. Eddie Earn's a master of spinning set. He's a master. <laughs> King Jimbo says the 80 million site deal, 100 million zone deal. Is there too much money invested in AJ? Politics might help AJ. I can't possibly think what you mean, Jimbo. <laughs> oh, Gary's, hold, on Gary's, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's just go back to that comment from Eddie Earn because that's. Oh, that's absolutely ridiculous. From the. And I'll say it. The, the best promoter in the world. Yeah. That's an absolutely ridiculous comment from Eddie Earn. Ridiculous. Everybody knows Triple G is well past his best. Look at the state of him in that last fight. This is going to be the, the easiest fight Canelo's had in about five or six fights. It's Triple G's retirement fund. Let's have it right. That's what it is. This fight should not be happening. That's how good this fight is. It shouldn't be happening. It's too way, way, way too one-sided. Eddie Earn can spin it as much as he wants. Everybody in boxing can see that. So Gary uh, says the only thing that worries me is how Usyk's prep spin, yeah, without yeah. being at home and having problems at the same spa, and, uh, having problems the same spa, and blah blah blah. Come on, come on! He's, he's got a lot of money. Let's not start giving him ready-made excuses if AJ does beat him. King Jimbo, hopefully Robert Garcia can help combine AJ's British Olympic style with the Mexican pressure tactics. That will be a deadly combination. Time will tell. But obviously Garcia likes the, the aggressive style of boxing, so them first few rounds are going to be absolutely electric. There's no two ways about it. That's the reason AJ's gone to him. Um, because he's got to adopt that tactic. tactic. He, 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 he can't, I mean, I'm with, um, I don't know who was said it earlier on, uh, someone in the sidebar said it earlier on, that uh, Usyk will work out AJ's tactics uh, and, and, and adopt his fight to suit. And I think he will, because I think he's that smart as a fighter. Um, there is, a, there is, of course there's a chance that if AJ, it, it completely does the fight. AJ's a big puncher. But that goes with any for anybody in the weights. Uh, my my, just, my personal opinion is AJ blows himself out and, and Usyk stops him. Yeah, my opinion is that people are lauding Usyk and it, was, and it was a real, real poor night at the office by AJ. I've said that before, so we're going to find out, aren't we? So, I don't, like I said, he's got four rounds in my eyes. I wouldn't even give him six. To be fit, so King Jimbo says... To be fair, Ern is right about the ticket sales and pay-per-view numbers for Canelo Triple G. Being, oh, much, fight, big, being much bigger than Crawford Spence, Canelo's numbers will, yeah, will be much bigger. Uh, ticket sales, they'll, they'll do a lot more than Spence. It's not a better fight, though, is it? It's not a bigger fight. It, it'll do more numbers. That, that make commercially, it a it's a bigger fight, commercially. But not, not from a boxing purist standpoint, it's not a better fight. Just commercially, it'll do, it'll do more money. It'll do more money than Spence Crawford, won't it? Outside of outside of Fury against AJ, Spence Crawford's the biggest fight in the world. Not commercially. No, no, no. But pu purely fu fighter versus fighter, it's the yeah, biggest from fight. Yeah, from purely standpoint, yes, but not commercially. So Matt Nash says Canelo stops Triple G this time. Which would be a big injustice to Triple G. Yes. Yeah. Our Triple G only won on 
on one of six judge, judges cards across two fights i'll never know joe said who cares about numbers i'm assuming that's army for the fights yeah, yeah me as well joe completely agree with you mate but without the money, the fights don't. Without the money, the fights don't happen. So, what's your what's your opinion, Joe, on on um, Canelo fighting Triple G again? Do you think it should happen? I'm I'm along those same lines as Matt. No, Triple G's tri Triple G is very very best. Beat Canelo in the first fight. The second fight was a lot closer. Um, but Triple G's way way way. I mean, how long, how long ago was that first fight? Can Can anyone tell me how long ago it was? No. Five years? I, I think it might be longer than that. So this is why, why we wait for that. Cedric says, did, Josh, did Joshua ever give a reason for leaving his original coach? Was that his excuse for the Usyk loss? I don't think he used it as an excuse, to be fair. But he, no. hasn't, but he hasn't come out with a reason that I'm aware of either. I don't think, Cedric, that there's ever been a public announcement to say, I'm leaving Robert McCracken. But, it, but to be fair, he's neither come out and publicly said it's McCracken's fault or lost the fight either, has it? No, no, to be he's, fair no, to no him. He's, he's got, they've, they've obviously got a lot of respect for each other. That's why neither of them have done any, any bad interviews because let's not forget, it was McCracken that masterminded AJ's Olympic title win. Um, they've got a lot of ground over a lot of years spending a lot of time with each other up in Sheffield. Um, so there's obviously respect there. AJ's doing what he thinks is right for his career. Uh, whether it's right or wrong, he's, he's doing what he thinks is right. And you can only respect that. Well, McCracken, fact, McCracken took him from Raw Novice, didn't he? He did, he did. Um, the fact that AJ has decided to take this route is up to AJ. The fact that he hasn't publicly publicly come out and said, I'm I'm leaving Rob McCracken for any this reason, A, A to Z, um, probably tells you the respect he's got for McCracken. What what AJ's done is he's been very subtle and he's, he's been filmed going to other gyms, talking to other trainers. And basically all that's done is it's so that little seed in people's minds that... Well, I, oh, I applaud AJ. Like I applaud AJ for doing it this way because it doesn't always have to be that pantomime split-up, does it, where they all start slagging no, each other off? No. So, Fitz said in the start, I think Canelo versus Triple G will be a better fight than we expect. Gary says, Rob's got your fight, your fight and Lauren Price now is a couple of fighters to think about. Joe says, in my opinion, we cracking did a fantastic job with Joshua. I agree. I agree. King Jimbo says Triple G will step up his game for Canelo. Triple G still has one of the best jabs, power punches, chins, and experience in boxing. Canelo is coming off a loss and worst performance of his career at 175, though, King Jimbo. Yeah. Coming back down to 168, which is his domain. So uh, Joe's also put, I've no interest in this fight. He's talking about Triple G and Canelo. We all know Canelo uh, stops a shot, Triple G. Yeah, completely agree, mate. So, my, my, my personal photographer, Matt Nash, has said, <laughs> AJ Andrew defeated the way Wilder should have done. No excuses, dusts himself off, doesn't blame anyone else. Too many fighters are quick to blame other people for their own shortcomings. Fully agree, Matt. Gary says, also, don't forget, Tony Sims done a great job with jo Joshua also. I know Rob was in the background, but Sims had a lot of input. Fair point? Yeah, yeah. Tony Fair Sims point. has gone on to... Tony Sims has gone on to prove he's a really good coach. Look at the stable he's got now. Doing a great job. Is there any other topics before we bring the show to a close that you want to touch on? Feel free to put in the sidebar before we, we close the meeting off. I think that might be about it. And then, uh... yeah, I think so, mate. Uh, those of you that are that are going down to uh, the evening with Lee Wood tomorrow night, um, come and say hello. We'll have a chat. Those of you that aren't going, why are you not going? 
if you're from Nottingham or you're from the East Midlands and you're fairly close by, it's only £20 a ticket. Andy, you've got to pick that one up. Should AJ have gone with Adam Booth instead of Garcia? <laughs> no, I don't think I will. <laughs> and Gary says, um, better be a versus Yard. Interesting fight, that one. I think better be a beats him. I think he'll stop him mid to late rounds. That's my view. Uh, anyway, you... back to <laughs> that's that's sad trap me a little bit. Back to um back to what I was yeah. saying about Lee Wood. Um well what about better be a versus yard that's mentioned inside? Uh what about better be a versus yard? Uh better yeah. be a too big a puncher for Anthony Yard, I'm afraid. Even though in my opinion, better be Evs um, over the hill. I think he's on the slide. He's very slow as a fighter. The, the, the type of fighter that beats better be Ev is a fighter that uses movement, ring craft, um, and uses a bit of a boxing brain. Have you ever thought, Ander, uh, that King Jimbo could actually be Adam Booth? It <laughs> could be. Could be. <laughs> <laughs> so, King Jimbo, stroke Adam Booth goes on to say, Wooden warranting unification is a big fight in the UK. It's a unification and stadium fight. I agree, but I'd want it in Nottingham and not in Leeds. And I think Lee Wood knocks him out. I think Lee Wood's the fresher of the two fighters. I, I was about to say that. I think Lee's the fresher of the two fighters. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Warrington's been in some serious wars, hasn't he? And and the signs of him slowing up, isn't that? Yeah, I'd say so. So Gary says Bivol. So I'm assuming by that that you think Bivol beats better be ever now. Do yeah, yeah I totally agree, Gary. That, that's what I was saying about the movement and the ring craft. Um, better be ever. Although he has that massive shot, he's slow. That's all he's got. He's slow, he, uh, and he needs somebody to stand in front of him for him to for him to take advantage of, the, of that uh, attribute that he's got. And Bivol's too smart for that. So yeah, just, why, just, just why, just before you come onto your little sales pitch for tomorrow night, and uh, hmm. we're due to do an interview with Lee Wood tomorrow at the audience with any questions that anyone's got. Put them in the sidebar now, and what what I'll let Andy ask him the questions when we get there. Hmm. So post them now, guys. So Gary says I don't understand all this fair play. Fair play if he takes it. He's a boxer who wants to be a world champ, etc. He should take it regardless. I'm assuming that's Yard. I think Yard will take it. Um, Kim Jimbo says, I'm not trolling. Why didn't AJ ever look at Booth? I'm going to take it away. Okay, so <laughs> I'm not slating Adam Booth. It, it, just, it was a little funny incident with Adam, with Adam Booth at uh, the Channel 5 show. Um, Moving on. Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, that's why he, that's why he said that, Jimbo. Um, why didn't AJ go to Adam Booth? Because it, Adam Booth's style would not suit AJ. Uh, AJ's not a slick fighter. Adam Booth's Adam Booth's style is 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 to be slick, uh, counter punch. That's not AJ. Um, if he tried to if he tried to employ AJ into that style, AJ would get knocked out um, by a number of fighters. Um, AJ needs to have an aggressive coach. He needs to go back to his raw. The days when he first turned pro, before in and around the Dillian White fight, that kind of AJ. Um, if it's the AJ day. that wasn't scared to take a shot, the AJ that wasn't worried about what was coming back. Because in my opinion, since Klitschko, AJ's been afraid of what's coming back at him. And that's why he's not the aggressive fighter. I don't think he's a scared fighter, but but he's thinking twice before he's going in and being aggressive himself. He's thinking twice about what's coming back the opposite way. I really wish you'd give an edited answer. King Jimbo says, after Canelo's loss to Bivol, is it fair to say he was a bit overrated? I'll go before you give us war and peace, Ander. Let me. I'll go first. <laughs> so what I would say is, I've been saying for a while, Canelo's ceiling is 175. He was never good enough to compete at 175 amongst the elite at that weight. So no, I wouldn't say he's overrated, but he doesn't belong at 175. So sooner like he has, go back down to 168. 
and I think he'll continue to dominate at that weight. No, go on, Andy. I'll, I'll get me travel pillar right there. Go on, Andy. You can't. You can't say he's overrated, mate. He's he's dominated. He's beat. He's beat undisputed champions. He's beat everybody that's been put in front of him, bar two fighters. One of them, he was really young, um, and wasn't ready for the fight. And uh, another one was just way, way, way too good. There's that. There's that famous saying in there: a good big and beats a good little, and then that's all that happened in that fight. There you go. Was that was that quick enough for you? So yeah, not bad. We we'll still work on it. So Joe Joe's got your first question for the night. Look, would Lee would leave Hearn to get a big fight? So I've made a note of it, and when we interview him, I'll leave it with you, Andy. Okay. So so I've made a note of that, Joe. So have a look on the channel next week, and Andy would have asked Lee what about that question. Any other questions while we're at it? Any other questions for Andy to be asking? Hold on a minute. Why is this Andy to be asking? Looks like I'm getting set up here. No, you're not getting set up. Just uh, <laughs> after your uh, performance with Adam Booth, you're the fire starter. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments before we bring to close, guys? Another question for Andy to be asking Lee Wood tomorrow? Make them nice, please. Yeah, make them nice. I'm not sure anyone can get a big, get bigger fights for Lee Wood than Eddie Earn is my initial thoughts. So back to my but while people are thinking about questions, back to my sales pitch. Um, Here we go. Get the travel filler. <laughs> no, no, it's 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 an opportunity for boxing fans to come in. It's going to be there's going to be ample opportunity for fight fans to ask Lee Wood questions about his career, um, about his his boxing path, about winning the world title, about the Conlon fight about what he's got next. Tickets are only 20 quid. In this pittance. So, That's a good question, uh, Matt. There is a few left. Get yourself down there. Matt, can I, you can ask that off, mate. You're going, you're going on. Yeah, night, I you? thought that. Um, I thought... <laughs> so, yeah, so get yourselves down there. It, it, it'll be a great night. Uh, it's at the South Bank Bar in Nottingham, by the way. Tickets can be bought from the South Bank Bar themselves. And where else can they be bought? And uh, I'm not too sure what the company's called, mate. You, I'm sure you both tell me. Oh, for job. So you can also purchase them online at giganticktickets.com. There we go. So King Jimbo says, I'm surprised Khan, Taylor and Joyce never went with Booth. <laughs> Booth is very underrated as a trainer, and uh, it's only right that I leave it with you. Booth is a very good trainer, to be fair. Underrated. All aside. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. All joking aside. I don't think he's underrated. He um, he did a fantastic job bringing a, a number of fighters through. Um, a lot of, but, but they have a lot of them have a, a very similar style. That that's all I'll say. But you get that with a lot of coaches, don't they? Coaches have a certain style of fighting. Uh, Adam Booth's right up there, though. He's a very good coach. The only thing I will give Adam Booth props for is, allegedly, he told George Groves that he can't beat Carl Roch, hence why he didn't train him. So he's also realistic with his fighters as well. Well, I'll use the word allegedly again because it was rumoured. If that's the case, he's obviously got his best interest for his fighters at all as well. He's not. He's not afraid to put his fighters in in tough fights to see where they're at level wise either. And he wants that Lee Wood rematch, didn't he? Andy he told us that. Yeah, he does. He does. Well, Michael Connors come out and said that himself, hasn't he? And Lee Woods. Lee Woods even said that that he's not against having the rematch. He just, he just doesn't want it to be next. King Jimbo's on the wind up here. Just before I get to that, <laughs> Joe said Adam Booth has ruined more careers than the Man United team. King Jimbo says, should Adam Booth run for Prime Minister? <laughs> he can't do a worse job than Boris, can he? So, Matt Nash said, I'll have more questions for Andy tomorrow than I will Lee Wood. <laughs> the first one will be get to the bar, I'd imagine. And you owe him one, mate, for the, for the comment earlier nothing. on. Right, so on that note, I think we'll bring it to a close. So, brilliant in the sidebar tonight. It's, it, it's, it's nice to have Adam Booth in the sidebar. I mean, King, King Jimbo. 
come come back on next week, mate. Come on, come on screen with us as well. Um, yeah, break. cheers, King Jim. But I've got my thoughts who you might actually be. Um, but if you are, I think you are. Props for coming on. Um, so yeah, so thank you for all the comments on this side. Whoever's going to Lee Wood tomorrow night, we'll see you at the event. All the points on Ander. Thanks for all the comments. Brilliant activity. I'll leave pass over to Andy to say goodbye. Cheers. No, it's great. We, we, there's been lots of comments in the sidebar tonight. It's been fantastic. A bit of a mix and match show. Um, but it's all good. We talked about a few things that we, we didn't even have plans to talk about. So uh, keep them coming, guys. Let's have a few of you on screen with us next time. Um, it's always good to see some new faces. Uh, comments have been great. We always have uh, really good, knowledgeable box, boxing fans on on Last Bell Boxing. So keep it coming, guys. Thanks very much, and we'll see you soon. Adios. I'll edit this out if needed, but it's not letting me end the stream. <laughs> I can see that. Let's keep it running for another for another. We'll just rejoin it again next Thursday. Everyone will still be sat in the sidebar. The Lee Wood show, by the way, guys, starts at seven o'clock tomorrow. So if you do get tickets, um be great to see you down there in association with um uh our partners south bank bar which is why we're pushing it by the way uh south bank bar is a great pub it's where to see all your live music all your live sporting events right in the center of nottingham city center Notice how Cole's jumped off screen and left me to it. It's good of you, mate. <laughs>